Hey, this is Kenneth here with quite possibly the worst idea I've ever come up with. Uh, this summer I managed to get my hands on a few small vacuum tubes and they've been sitting around and I figured I, I would try and do something with them. Uh, so what, what I did just as a proof of concept is I took a vacuum tube and I connected up just enough connections on it to treat it as a standard triode. Uh, I couldn't find any good uh, vacuum tube sockets and so I'm just using alligator clips on here which is a horrible idea uh, and so what I have is I have a uh, full wave rectifier right here so I'm taking uh, 120 volts AC and rectifying it up to 170 volts DC uh, I have two filtering capacitors on it and then I'm feeding the plate voltage through this little LED right here which you can see is lit uh, it's pulling about 74.74 uh, milliamps right now through uh, through the LED and that's connected to the plate of the vacuum tube which then goes through three grids which I only have one connected and then it goes to the cathode and then it has a heater which right now I have a pair of battery pair of double A's on uh, as you can see if we disconnect the grid from positive voltage the LED goes out and then turns on again when you uh, turn it on let's see if, yeah there we go it's like you can see it lights. There's lit, and there it is. So that's that's ju that's just kind of the proof of concept. Uh, if you turn off, take off the heater, you can see the current drops fairly rapidly. Uh, that's because the cathode, which is negatively biased, has lots of electrons on it, and then when you heat it, it helps uh, knock those electrons off, and that allows the current to flow through the vacuum tube. Uh, I'm going to show right now that if you increase the heater, so if I go from 3 volts to 9 volts, which is more than this vacuum tube is designed for, but you'll see that the current that going through the LED will go up significantly. So where before it was hanging out at about 1 milliamp, now it's up at about 3. Uh, this is significantly less than the vacuum tube can actually handle if I were using all three grids, but uh, that toasted the LED and so that didn't really do me much good as far as demonstrations. Uh, I cracked open another vacuum, one of my vacuum tubes for you to see it. So uh, this vertical bars on the outside here are the two, is the plate. So they're common and they're ver uh, typically very positively biased. Uh, inside of those there's three sets of coils of wire which are the three grids. Uh, those are biased positively or negatively to uh, control the current flowing uh, through this vacuum. And then on the very middle, uh, which is you can see up here is that silver tube. Right, maybe you can't. Uh, but the very middle is the cathode, and then inside of that is a little coil of wire that's the heater. And so the uh, heater heats up the cathode, which then starts shooting off electrons. And then these three grids control whether the electrons uh, fall back onto the cathode or flow out to the uh, plate here and that's what allows it to amplify so putting a voltage on the grid allows more current to flow much like a transistor but uh, at a much higher voltage and much less efficiently so I just th thought that'd be interesting uh, I'll reiterate again never do this at home because I have 170 volts just flowing around on this breadboard and um, I do have it on an isolation switch here and uh, I'm very, very careful to only use one hand at a time, but uh, this is definitely not 5 volts, so don't do this at home. Alright, see ya.